James Kaufman, World News Report Today. Ladies and gentlemen, today is April 10th, 2022, 6.30 p.m. Central here in the USA. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we had a very strong geomagnetic storm, a G7 and a G5. They went on for six hours basically last night from about 9 till about 3 in the morning centrally here where I'm located in Texas. Now, the problem I have with that is nothing has happened according to all of our other satellite information. That is, GOES, LASCO, etc., 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 to cause these two geomagnetic storms or three geomagnetic storms We've seen over the last three days. It is very, very worrisome, especially when NOAA is removing data from LASCO and knowing that we had, well, much stronger plasma hit the planet yesterday, which was also completely unpredicted at 45 centimeters cubed. No event happened that could have caused that either. I have to wonder if we're being told the whole truth. Can y'all believe that the 45 centimeters cubed of plasma didn't at least cause a geomagnetic storm yesterday? Is it real or is it Memorex? Now looking at today's GOES X-ray flux, which is one of our very first warnings that a CME might be headed to the planet uh, because X-rays travel very, very fast and usually arrive just minutes after an eruption. And if they hit the satellite that orbits our planet, a hundred miles in the sky, the chances are that the rest of the CME is headed in that same direction, correct? And usually a CME takes about 48 hours to get here, although I understand the Carrington event took around 18 hours and some CMEs, coronal mass ejections, take th up to three or four days. However, We've had a C flare today. Our baseline continues to drop to a mid B. And if this or this caused what happened today or this, then the C flare we had today is going to blow the planet up. What a joke. Heading over to NOAA's KP Index Breakdown Forecast, April 10th, 11th, and 12th, 2022. Wow, they got it exactly right, but their forecast yesterday had ones and twos. So they went back and changed it after the fact to make it correct. What kind of forecast is that? Well, they have forecasted ones and twos for the rest of the week. We'll have to see what happens. Obviously, if y'all go back and look at yesterday's solar weather update, space weather update, y'all will see that it was supposed to be a very, very calm day on the planet. And they weren't really expecting any geomagnetic storm whatsoever. All right, now to Lasco C3. This starts out yesterday. This will be the C flare, supposedly. Look at that halo ejection and how much mass there is there. That's supposed to be that small C flare that hit last night. And it goes on all day today. You can see it expanding in all directions. And everything looks great until we have a few things appear. First, we have a spaceship here that appears. And just a few frames later, we have this. I think we're seeing some sort of planet or comet orbit our sun, and they're trying to hide it from us. It's what it appears. But don't think Noah let you down again, guys, because they would never let you down. If you move on down a little bit further here, and you get to, what, 1630? They remove six hours of data, or almost six hours of data. And there's obviously been another huge explosion. Epic, epic stuff. Six hours of data removed from LASCO. I think I've had enough. Over to go Solar Ultraviolet Imager 195 Angstroms. We have a rather large coronal hole that's developed now, about to be Earth-facing. Uh, we did see a pop in winds, but it sure took a while to get here. We have all the dark filaments on all the corners, and someone sent me a video of them 
actually editing these things out on core i don't know exactly what they are but they acted like the sun was uh and uh, a mechanical object and those had something to do with it we see tons of what look like sunspots to me look at that arc one of these probably sent that halo cme towards us and that cme from today towards us we'll see if we can see it on sdo now this is not how all of them are going to read but uh, this is the only little kick here these two little kicks it caused a solar storm here in plasma, and you can see the indication here. That's it. Everything else is below 10 centimeters all day, and that wasn't but 25 centimeters. Not anything compared to the 45 centimeters cube we saw yesterday. Winds have gone up from about 450 kilometers a second to under 500 kilometers a second, and I have no idea what heated up the temperatures so hot and then allowed them to fall and heat back up uh it's not the solar winds it's not the plasma i'd love to know what it is all right over to the wsa animal prediction center they want to be right i'm sure by now uh, they have a large powerful cme it looks like it's strengthening as it moves away from its source coming in at 30 centimeters cubed on the 14th Hitting stereo ahead on the 11th, the 14th, four days from now. Was that yesterday, CME? Because they haven't had time. That means it would take five days for that C flare to get here. And that C flare would have 30 centimeters cubed of plasma. That C flare from yesterday afternoon would be the only thing this could be. This is very, very strange. How could it possibly take five days to get here yesterday was the ninth they've got it coming in on the 14th five days for a chrome mass ejection after it pops to hit earth that's unheard of good news i can say is it looks like we got hit by very little x-rays today uh, the c flare up here that they just had is very light and wasn't very strong at all, but it was stronger than yesterday afternoon sea flare, where they have an alert for 30 centimeters of plasma coming in and solar winds coming in. So what gives? What's going on? It's time to answer some questions. No more aliens and starships. We want the answers. What's going on? All right, heading over to Discover real-time solar wind we have that same little pop there what would cause a little pop like that and again it only goes to 29 uh, not 45 like yesterday but the solar winds at the time of all these space weather indications they're under 500 kilometers per second and plasma here at this one is at nine solar winds are at 480 and they have a geomagnetic storm well, we had solar winds at 480 yesterday with plasma at 45.9, and we didn't have a geomagnetic storm. So tell me, folks, what's going on? It looks like they have SOHO working again, so they should have my picture up, I hope. They show the increase in winds uh, today from about 400 kilometers to just under 480, something like that. And they show density at the beginning of the day. See the density yesterday? Well, no solar event. The density today, well, two bumps of plasma, less powerful. Well, we have a huge G7 and G5 magnetic storm. So I don't understand again. Look when the plasma hits how the temperature drops off to almost nothing. It's really, really strange. Look at that. And it does it here when it hits two and it does it here when it hits two so the plasma is really cooling this whatever that means all right according to nasa we have three sunspots to worry about only we will check for ourselves 2983 2978 and 2985 all right let's head over to sto and guys sto well it starts uh, back on the 8th 
and I'm looking for things to happen here. Uh, sea flare, sea flare, anyone from one of these two sunspots? That might have been a sea flare right there. That was maybe last night's sea flare. We do have, there's another one right there. So we do have both sea flares coming out of that same earth facing, uh, well, sunspot group. And we have a jack o' lantern ugly face and a coral hole coming around to be earth facing soon. Coral hole in the South Pole, coral hole in the North Pole. Uh, and we do see both those sea flares. It cuts it off just as today's sea flare pops off. And it does show yesterday's sea flare. They should both be inbound. All right, it looks like they're back in the office. Look, they guessed the, the double hit perfectly now after it happened. <laughs> they have us getting hit on the 11th tomorrow, too. So I guess that's today's hit. And tomorrow's the 11th. That's the 11th hit. And that's the 15th hit. And you can see that they always underestimate the solar winds at the ESA. This is the European Space Agency's Euphora Spiral. We like to go to as many agencies as possible. All right, heading over to STO HMI magnetogram image. We see we have a mess on our hands, folks. Uh, not really. I don't see any sunspots that look treacherous, except for maybe this little one coming around the bend here. Everything else looks pretty docile. And I guess they're going to play hardball with this, uh, well, this uh, Soho 284 Angstrom's picture that still has not been updated since the 31st, 11 and a half days ago, ladies and gentlemen. And we're paying these people to do this. Let's let NASA get into the mix. They have uh, something just appearing on top of Earth right here. Let's see what day that is. On the 11th. That was it. They didn't see it because it just appeared as it hit Earth. Uh, here is Earth over here, stereo ahead, stereo behind. So they have actually went back. Well, this is the 12th again. That's that same one they have hitting on the 12th. They've had it hitting on the 12th now for about three weeks, that same plasma. How did they forecast three weeks into advance? Look at every one of my space weather updates for the last three weeks, and you'll see it's going to hit on the 12th. The whole thing's ridiculous. They must be creating these blasts in some other way. God bless you and yours, folks. Please share, please subscribe, and always remember that anything is possible in Bizarro World.